The provisional agenda for this meeting is the situation in the Middle East, including the Palestinian question. The agenda is adopted. In accordance with Rule 37 of the Council's Provincial Rules of Procedure, I invite the representatives of Israel and Yemen to participate in this meeting. It is so decided. I propose that the Council invite the Permanent Observer of the Observer State of Palestine to the United Nations to participate in the meeting in accordance with the provision rules of procedure and the previous practice in this regard. There be no objection. It is so decided. The Security Council will now begin its consideration of item two of the agenda. Members of the Council have before them document S-2024-254, the text of a draft resolution submitted by Algeria, Ecuador, Guyana, Japan, Malta, Mozambique, Republic of Korea, Sierra Leone, Slovenia, and Switzerland. The Council is ready to proceed Proceed to the, uh, the Council is ready to proceed to the vote on the draft resolution before it. Yes. I now give the floor to those members of the Council who wish to make statements before the vote. I give the floor to the representative of Mozambique. Mr. President, I have the honor to introduce this draft resolution on behalf of the 10 elected members of the Security Council, namely Algeria, Ecuador, Guyana, Japan, Malta, Republic of Korea, Sierra Leone, Slovenia, Switzerland, and my own country, Mozambique. We wish to commend the presidency of Japan for convening this meeting in order to take action on this important resolution on the Middle East, including the Palestinian question. We express our deep appreciation to all members of this council for their efforts and the inputs on this draft resolution aimed at ending the catastrophic situation in the Gaza Strip. Mr. President, the situation in Gaza is a matter of grave concern to the entire international community. Indeed, the escalation of the conflict in the Gaza Strip and its catastrophic consequences are a clear threat to international peace and security. In this context, the E10 felt compelled to table this draft resolution before you. The 15 members of this council, individually and collectively, have a mandate under the Charter to work for the maintenance of international peace and security, and that their actions impact the entire international community. This is the strong conviction that led to the drafting of the text that we are considering this morning. This council has been consistently unanimous in its agreement on the obligation of the parties in conflict to respect international law, including international humanitarian law and international human rights law. The 10 have always supported the call for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza as a fundamental step. For this reason, and in respect for the holy month of Ramadan, 
we have proposed the present resolution that it demands an immediate ceasefire during this second period, leading to a permanent and sustainable uh, ceasefire. At the same time, the draft resolution demands the immediate and the unconditional release of all hostages and emphasizes that humanitarian access must be allowed to address their medical and other humanitarian needs. These have been among our key demands for weeks. The draft resolution further demands that the parties comply with their obligations under international law, as we said before, including international humanitarian law and human rights law. The draft resolution also emphasizes the need for the parties to abide by the pertinent resolutions adopted by this council, including resolutions 2712 and 2720 of 2023. The 10 have a consultative, have adopted a consultative approach during the negotiation process of this text. We have consulted extensively and in good faith with all members of this council in a frank, open, and flexible manner with the aim of achieving a text that addresses the situation in Gaza. The adoption of this draft resolution will certainly be another important step uh, this council can build upon to comprehensively address the crisis in Gaza. Given the utmost urgency of the situation, we call upon all members of this council, all and each member of this council, to vote in favor of this resolution. While this resolution is crucial, it is essential that we continue working towards a comprehensive ceasefire and a lasting peace in the region. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of Mozambique for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of Russian Federation. Господин председатель, мы весьма разочарованы и озадачены. Extremely um, stunned and disappointed about the way the work on the draft resolution in the last 24 hours was done. The fact that the word permanent in OP1 uh, relating to a ceasefire is proposed to be replaced by a more weak wording was something we learned about a little more than an hour before the beginning of the meeting. That is unacceptable. We all received instructions for the vote on the text that contained the word permanent, and we believe that that is of fundamental importance. All of the remaining wording uh, leaves too broad an area for interpretation which could allow Israel to resume its military operation in the Gaza Strip at any moment following the expiry of the ceasefire, which we today hope will be established. In order to avoid this scenario, we would like to make an oral amendment to the text and return the word permanent in OP1. In so doing, it would read as it read in the previously issued resolution, namely, Demands an immediate ceasefire for the months of Ramadan, respected by all parties, leading to a permanent sustainable ceasefire, and also demands the immediate and unconditional release of all hostages, as well as ensuring humanitarian access to, uh, to address their medical and other humanitarian needs, and further demands that the parties comply with their obligations under international law, 
in relation to all, uh, to all persons they detain. Благодарю вас. I thank the representative of Russian Federation for their statement. Members of the Council have before them a proposed amendment submitted by Russian Federation to the text of the draft resolution contained in the document S-2024-254 submitted by Algeria, Ecuador, Guyana, Japan, Malta, Mozambique, Republic of Korea, Sierra Leone, Slovenia, and Switzerland. Rule 36 of the Council's Provisional Rules of Procedure states, inter alia, the following. When an amendment adds to or deletes from the text of a motion or dra draft resolution, that amendment shall be voted on first. Accordingly, I intend to put the proposal, proposed amendment to the vote first. <laughs> Will those in favor of proposed amendment please raise their, raise their hand? Against? Abstentions? The result of the voting is as follows. Three votes in favor, one vote against, 11 abstentions. The proposed amendment has not been adopted, having failed to obtain the required number of votes. I shall put the draft resolution to the vote now. Will those in favor of the draft resolution contained in document S-2024-254 please their, raise their hand? Those against? Abstention. The result of the voting is as follows. 14 votes in favor, zero vote against, one abstention. The draft resolution has been adopted as resolution 27-28-2024. I now give the floor to those members of the Council who wish to make statements after the vote. I give the floor to the representative of Algeria. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to thank all the council members for their flexibility and the constructive way that allowed us today to adopt this long-awaited resolution. A resolution that calls for an immediate ceasefire in the Gaza Strip in order to put an end to the massacres that unfortunately are still ongoing over the past five years, five months. Over the past five months, the Palestinian people has suffered greatly. 
this bloodbath has continued for far too long. It is our obligation to put an end to this bloodbath before it is too late. Finally, finally, the Security Council is shouldering its responsibility as the primary organ responsible for maintaining international peace and security. It is finally responding to the calls of the international community. These repeated calls, not only from the international community, but also from the Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres. And once again, we renew our support to the Secretary General for his noble position and for his support to this just cause. Despite the heinous campaigns that were launched against him, Mr. President, when we voted on the draft resolution tabled by Algeria last month, we promised that we will spare no effort. We will continue to work hard to make sure that the Security Council is abiding by its full responsibility. We also promised that we will come back once again to knock on the doors of the Security Council. And here we are today alongside all 10 elected member states to convey a clear message to the Palestinian people. This message is as follows. The international community in its entirety did not abandon you, feels your suffering. It did not abandon you, Mr. President. Adopting today's resolution is only the beginning to meet the aspirations of the Palestinian people. We look forward to the commitment and the compliance of the Israeli occupying power with this resolution for them to put an end to the bloodbath without any conditions to end the suffering of the Palestinian people. It is the responsibility of the Security Council to ensure the implementation of the provisions of this resolution. In conclusion, Mr. President, I reaffirm that Algeria will return once again before the Security Council under the instructions of His Excellency the President of the Republic to make sure that Palestine returns to its natural status as a full-fledged member 
sovereign member states of the United Nations. I thank you. I thank the representative of Algeria for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of the United States. Thank you, Mr. President. At the top, I want to express my deepest condolences to the families and loved ones of last week's terrorist attack in Moscow. We condemn terrorism in all its forms and stand in solidarity with the Russian people in grieving the loss of life from this horrific event. Colleagues, today this council spoke out in support of the ongoing diplomatic efforts led by the United States, Qatar, Egypt, to bring about an immediate and sustainable ceasefire, secure the immediate release of all hostages, and help alleviate the tremendous suffering of Palestinian civilians in Gaza who are in dire need of protection and life-saving humanitarian assistance. The United States fully supports these critical objectives. In fact, they were the foundation of the resolution we put forward last week, a resolution that Russia and China vetoed. But colleagues, the United States' support for these objectives is not simply rhetorical. We're working around the clock to make them real, on the ground, through diplomacy, because we know that it is through only through diplomacy that we can push this agenda forward. We're getting closer to a deal for an immediate ceasefire with the release of all hostages, but we're not there yet. Now, let's be clear. A ceasefire could have come about months ago if Hamas had been willing to release hostages, months ago. Instead, Hamas continues to stand in the way of peace, to throw up roadblocks, cower in tunnels beneath Gaza cities and behind uh, under civilian infrastructure and hide among the civilian population. So today my ask to members of this council and to member states in every region of the world is this, speak out and demand unequivocally that Hamas accepts the deal on the table. Now I hope I'm wrong, I really do, but I don't expect that from Russia and China especially because they still can't bring themselves to condemn Hamas's terrorist attacks on October 7th. Just last week, Russia and China vetoed a resolution that condemned this horrific attack, a resolution the vast majority of this council supported. They have shown time and time again that they are not actually interested in advancing a durable peace through diplomatic efforts, nor for all their rhetoric are they interested in making any meaningful contributions to humanitarian efforts? Instead, they are using this devastating conflict as a political cudgel to try to divide this council at a time when we need to come together. It is deeply, deeply cynical, and we should all see through it. Colleagues, we appreciated the willingness of members of this council to take some of our edits and improve on this resolution. Still, certain key edits were ignored, including our request to add a condemnation of Hamas. And we did not agree with everything in the resolution. For that reason, we were unfortunately not able to vote yes. However, as I've said before, we fully support some of the critical objectives in this non-binding resolution. And we believe it was important for the council to speak out and make clear that our ceasefire must, any ceasefire, must come with the release of all hostages. Indeed, as I've said before, the only path to a durable end to this conflict is the release of all hostages. Critically, a ceasefire and the release of hostages will allow much more humanitarian aid to get into Gaza at a time when famine is looming large and provide an opportunity to work toward a sustainable cessation of hostilities toward a future where Hamas can no longer threaten Israel and never repeat October 7th and no longer control Gaza and use civilians as shields. Toward a future where Palestinians and Israelis live side by side in peace in two democratic states of their own. 
something that will never happen with Hamas, a terrorist organization dedicated to the destruction of Israel and the killing of Jews, a terrorist organization this body still fails to condemn, controlling, Hamas, uh, controlling Gaza. Colleagues, we meet during the holy month of Ramadan. This should be a reason, a season of peace for Muslim communities around the world. Just as October 7th, Simhat Torah should have been a day of peace for Jewish communities. This resolution rightly acknowledges that during the month of Ramadan, we must recommit to peace. Hamas can do that by accepting the deal on the table. A ceasefire can begin immediately with the release of the first hostage. And so we must put pressure on Hamas to do just that. This is the only path to securing a ceasefire and the release of hostages, as we have all called for today. That is what this resolution means. A ceasefire of any duration must come with the release of hostages. This is the only path. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I thank the representative of the United States for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of Slovenia. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Today is an important day. We're bringing you live pictures from the United Nations where members of the Security Council have just voted uh, to support a resolution uh, which demands an immediate ceasefire for the month of Ramadan respected by all parties, leading to a lasting, sustainable ceasefire. The vote for that was 14 in favour, zero against, one abstention. That was the US.